Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Good afternoon. Uh, I should say to those of you who are joining us on the East Coast, where I am, uh, I'll say good morning to those of you who might be in the Central Time Zones or the Pacific Time Zones. I might also say good evening to some of our attendees or registrants who are joining us from uh, across the pond in the UK and then possibly even Australia. We have a few attendees there. So welcome everyone to today's presentation of the Radioactive Trading Methodology and Power Options. I'm glad to see you all here. Unfortunately, Kurt could not join us, but that just means that uh, we're going to be able to still be able, still review, I should say, some of the uh, methods and uh, introduction, I should say, to radioactive trading principles. But we're going to spend more time today on the Power Options tools, and I'm actually going to share with you some recent trades that I have made radioactively uh, based on customer questions that came in during Saturday's presentation, the two-hour paid seminar that Kurt and I hosted on income methods number one and two. Now before we get started, I just want to ask a couple of uh, quick polls. I'm going to fire them off one after the other. I just want to get to know the audience a little better. It will help me gauge uh, the pace and the information that we want to cover today. Uh, so let me just go ahead there and take a look. I'm going to launch this first poll and what I would like to know is what is your involvement uh, with radioactive trading and power options right now. Um, I'm sorry, are you just uh, viewing the free materials? Have you read the sketch? Maybe checked out some of the YouTube videos? Have you gone through the free materials and you're considering buying the blueprint, uh, Kurt's full work? Uh, do you own the blueprint and you're here because you want to know more about fission or more about power options? Did you join us on Saturday, the Mastery Series CDs? Did you join us on Saturday or looking to purchase some of the other uh, CDs that Kurt used to enhance um, the details of the blueprint, or are you currently involved with a coaching session or a coaching program? Okay, this does give me a very good gauge of uh, what we're going to have to go through today, but we're going to make sure we cover all the bases. I'm going to change Kurt's normal presentation, but we're still going to see, of course, some of the basics and some of the background that we need uh, for radioactive trading. Okay, I've had the poll open for a minute. I appreciate everyone uh, joining, uh, answering the polls quickly. Let me go ahead and close the poll. I know some of you are still voting, but uh, I'm going to close the poll and share the results. So 52% of our attendees have been going through the free materials, the sketch, the YouTube videos, these live webinars. That's excellent. 30% uh, are thinking about buying the blueprint. 37% of you already own the blueprints, and we have 4% who, of course, are looking at the Mastery Series CDs. Well, that's great. Let me go ahead and hide those results, and I just want to ask another quick question of our attendees, of everybody. What I'd like to know is just what uh, strategies are you trading right now? What kind of option strategies are you trading right now? Um, are you uh, currently uninterested in options? You've maybe had some bad experience. Are you trading covered calls? Are you mainly looking at long calls and long puts, purchasing for uh, speculation on the market increase or decrease? Um, are you doing spread trades? Or are you looking at naked calls and naked puts? Wow, you guys are voting very quickly. I greatly appreciate that. So help us go through this here. I just want to get to know everyone. And I like what I'm seeing here. This, is, uh, this matches what I was hoping to show in the presentation with some of the uh, income methods that I've done recently on a couple of my positions. And, uh, of course, the traditional income method, which leads to what I'm looking for in a new position I've opened that I, well, opened last week that I am going to share with everyone. Hmm. My apologies, I've lost track of time. It was actually two weeks ago. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, I've had the poll open for one minute, so let me go ahead and close that now, and I'll share the results. Three percent of our attendees uh, don't like options, and I... Um, you know, that's it's a hard thing to do. When I first started trading options, I had some mixed experiences, and we'll talk a little bit about Kurt's mixed experience in the next five or six minutes. Um, I feel strongly that uh, when I started trading, I was doing covered calls. I was doing naked puts. I even entered some calendar spreads, and um, I had some successes. I was able to see that there was a lot of profit to be made using options as, as leverage and using options as speculation, but... I did have some losses which countered most of my gains, and that was disheartening. So those of you who answered options me no likey, either you're just getting started in options or you've had some of the experiences that I had in the beginning. And I think you're in the right place because this method teaches you how to protect against 
uh, the losses you might suffer with covered calls or even with naked puts, even with the spread trades. We'll discuss that when we get into the trade simulator tool. Oh, we have a tie here for number one. 61% of you are trading covered calls and using long calls and long puts. That's excellent. 55% uh, are trading spread trades. That's great. And we have 18% trading naked calls and naked puts. I've uh, done naked puts in the past. I uh, haven't done any recently, but I've been considering it. I avoid naked calls just because of the unlimited risk factor. <laughs> That's just a personal preference. If I'm bearish on something, I might look at a bear call spread or sort of a bearish form of a collar. But that's just a little personal background. Uh, let me hide those results. Let's get right back into it. And I thank you uh, for everyone for voting very quickly. All right, so we're back on our main screen here. And let me just give you a little bit of background for those of you that are new to Kurt Frankenberg. Radioactive trading was founded by Kurt uh, back in 2000, and he wrote the blueprint, which is his full outline or the full description of his trading methodology in 2002. Kurt is a martial arts instructor and a martial arts student. Uh, he's always learning, just as we all are when we're trading. Um, he founded Radioactive Trading, um, and he's taught and lectured at uh, MIT and other places around the country. The reason Kurt founded Radioactive Trading is just like many of you might have experienced, he paid uh, several thousand dollars or a few thousand dollars uh, to attend a weekend seminar to learn how to trade covered calls and some other strategies. Well, he started trading the techniques that he was taught over the two-day seminar. And his first month, he had a decent return of around 5 or 6%. And in his second month, he had a decent return as well. Well, his uh, covered call guru told him he could do much better if he just traded the covered call strategy on margin. And, of course, so Kurt went ahead and said, that sounds like a great idea. And shortly into that third month, he got a margin call from his broker. The stock that he was trading plummeted and he essentially wiped out uh, all of his savings that he had set aside to trade. But he didn't give up at that point, and he didn't just go pay another $3,000 once he got back on his feet to attend a different seminar. He started studying the different positions, and he knew that when the stock he was trading plummeted and he was on margin, that that was a bad idea. He learned the hard way. The lesson he learned in the market, of course, was better than anything he learned over the two-day presentation that cost him $2,500 to about $3,000. But he knew the money had to go somewhere, so he started looking at different approaches of trading options and trading stocks that he was bullish on, and what he came up with was a unique form of a married put position where he could have single-digit risks, unlimited upside profit potential, and then as he kept trading this, he developed income methods. Income methods are adjustments that are made onto that existing married put, what he calls an RPM, to lower the initial at risk and potentially bulletproof the position. So that's the starting point of how Kurt got involved. And why it was created, well, I'm sorry, we just kind of reviewed this. He made up his mind never again to lose those values, and he set up this type of uh, basic setup where we have limited risks and unlimited upside profit potential. Uh, now today, I'm going to be your presenter. My name is Michael Chupka. As many of you read in the email, I'm the Director of Education here at Power Options. Power Options is a patented suite of tools for self-directed options investors. I've had the great pleasure of working with Ernie and Greg Serena for the past seven years. I handle a lot of the coaching session and education materials, webinars for Power Options. Um, I've co-authored two books on trading. Um, I have uh, the Protective Options Strategies book with Ernie Zarenner and also a book on trading naked puts and using the Power Options tools. Now this, I'm sorry, was rushing through to uh, create some new slides for this presentation and so I didn't edit this. It says I've been trading radioactively for over a year. I've actually been trading radioactively for over two and a half years. Um, so I have various experiences, very promising experience, very good experiences. This method protected me on one stock from losing about 65 to 70 percent. I actually made a profit on that stock, um, even though it dropped about 70 percent and it came back up slightly over a four or five month period. I was able to turn a profit by following these techniques. Um, Rich just sent in a question. Is this a recording? Yes, Rich, I am recording this presentation. Um, this also gives me a time to mention that, again, I am doing this solo today without Kurt. Um, so if you have questions, please feel free to send them. If you're not hearing the sound correctly or you're not seeing the screen very well, or if I'm moving too fast, just please let me know. Use that question pod to send me a question. But I'm going to ask that you hold your questions to the end uh, because I'm going to try to leave five, ten minutes at the end to handle all questions. This will allow me to move more quickly or have a better flow, I should say, through the presentation.
All right. But yes, Rich, I am recording this. Hopefully we'll have it in the archives uh, later today or on Wednesday in the free webinar section on radioactive trading and power options. Oh. All right. So the mission of radioactive trading and power options, it's important that we give away the very best parts of the system. We're going to give you actual trading ideas that you can implement in your account today without you having to pay a dime and still join us for these free presentations. Um, if you want to need more support, it's available in person and online, and we'll talk about that later on in the presentation as well. Now what I hope, um, what you should expect from this presentation and what I hope to give to you in this presentation is we're going to identify what the problem is in trading stocks and options. We'll learn why most investors haven't solved it yet. They keep trying, but they keep suffering uh, for specific reasons. We're going to show how to use the Power Options tools to help you solve this problem and the methodology, of course, that entails solving the problem. We're going to discuss a few income methods and adjustments using the Power Options tools and uh, some of my actual recent trades. Uh, finally, we're going to discuss what steps you can take next to further your education and uh, get the full details of the radioactive trading methodology. All right, so those, that's the background. Those are the basics. Let's go ahead and talk about what this setup entails. And we're going to review a position from about a year ago on Green Mountain Coffee Roasters. Now, Kurt made a profit on this position without an adjustment, without using the income methods. On, I'm sorry about that. There we go. On April 22, 2009, Kurt bought 200 shares of GMCR at 54.20. At the same time, he bought two September 65 puts for 16.70. Now that looks expensive, and this is the very same thought I had when I when I first met Kurt, and he called me on the phone, and he was trying to use the Power Options tools. When I first looked at a setup that was similar to this, my thought was, I don't see how you can make any money on this. Typically, when you read about a married put. You hear married put defined as buying shares of stock and at the same time buying in out of the money put options maybe only one or two months out in time. So I might have looked to buy GMCR 200 shares at 54.20 and at the same time maybe I would have purchased a 47 and a half or a 45 put for May 2009 and only paid maybe a dollar or 80 cents. Now that does protect your position but the problem with using a short term out of the money put is that the stock needs to drop to $45 or $47.5 before the insurance policy kicks in. So I would be risking more than roughly 10-15% on the position. And we're going to show a little bit later why that is too much to risk. So Kurt reversed that idea when he first started developing these techniques. What he did is he went in the money. He bought a put that was higher than the current stock price at $65, and he went further out in time. Some of the discussion we had on Saturday's presentation, the paid seminar, was reviewing the core concepts. Um, the core concepts of radioactive trading are fist, force and ideal size trade, the ATM bell curve, meaning when we're at the money, when we have a strike of a call or a put that's at the money, that's typically when we want to sell because the time val value is swelled up. And if we're out of the money or in the money, that's when the time value is low and we might look to purchase but also to maximize our annualized return, the third core concept is the red line, radioactive decay, where an option loses its value typically in the last 30 days. So when we're selling, we want to sell short, and when we're looking to buy, we want to go longer term so the option doesn't decay as rapidly. All right, so here is his setup on April 22nd. He's got $70.90 into the position. Now, when I first saw a setup like this, I said, well, Kurt, I don't get it you're going to need the stock to move up to $70.90 before you can make any profit. And if the stock, let's say, went up to $71.20, I'm sorry, $71.10, you'd only make $1.20. That doesn't, I mean, with almost a 25% move, that's not a great profit. But that's not how the put options work. Because we bought it far out in time and in the money, what happened was eight days later, on April 30th, when Kurt was in a live seminar, GMCR popped up to 72.10, but the put didn't go to zero. It still retained a lot of its time premium, and it had a value of 970. Now, don't get me wrong, we lost value on the put. We originally purchased, for, purchased the put for about 16.70, and after this move, when the stock jumped up 
the put was only worth nine seventy. So we lost seven dollars on the put, but in order for that to happen, we gained eighteen dollars on the stock. So the total liquidation value, Kurt turned around and just sold to close the shares of stock, sold to close the put, and he took in eighty-one dollars and eighty cents per share. Remember, his original investment was seventy dollars and ninety cents. So rather than my expectation of saying, "Hey, you'd only make a dollar twenty," Kurt was able to make a profit of ten dollars and ninety cents, or fifteen percent in eight days. Now, does Kurt see this type of return on every trade he makes? No. This is what's possible. When we enter into a married put position, we have a limited risk. In this case, it was about 8 or 9% of our total investment. Remember, we're guaranteed to get out of the position at $65. So even though our original investment was $70.90, at any time between now and September expiration, if even if the stock plummeted down to $20 per share, we could have exercised the put, sold to close our stock at 65 so we were only risking $5.00 and 90 cents on the total position with the original investment of 70 90 but because we didn't sell a call um, because we weren't doing a leverage spread we have an unlimited upside profit potential so when the stock took off Kurt was able to get very good profits now this is just the original setup this is what's possible what comes later of course we're going to discuss the income methods and the income methods will help us adjust the position as we move forward if the stock just moved up four or five percent, maybe if the stock dropped six or seven percent, and we're going to show some good examples of that later in the presentation. Well, what's the problem? Well, the problem with trading stocks and options is we just don't know the future, do we? That particular position on GMCR had a great gain, and I will admit, of course, that that gain was because earnings came out shortly after Kurt had entered the position. Did he plan, did he look specifically to enter into a stock where earnings were coming up in eight days and he was hoping for the pop? Not really. That's not what's described in the blueprint of how you enter a position, but it can be helpful. In this case, it just happened. But the problem is we just don't know the future, do we? Here's a chart of a very volatile stock. I believe this is, oh, it's XL Maritime Carriers. I'm sorry about that. It's XL Maritime Carriers. I don't know how many of you remember the Greek shipping stocks. I myself had my best trade and my worst trade on dry ships. I started tracking dry ships at 17. I bought shares of stock before I could even sell a call or do another uh, adjustment with options. The stock was trading at 25, then it moved up to 30, then it moved up to 40. I sold it at about 60. I was only trading a couple hundred shares, so it was still a fantastic gain. And then it kept going up, bought back in at about 90, followed it up to 120, sold it again. The stock kept going up. I mean, this is a great return. But then what did I do? I bought shares around 130 when it was near its peak. And I don't know how many of you remember this, but it just plummeted right after that. And eventually the stock ended up trading back down at about $40, $50 per share. And I tried to leverage down. I tried to sell some calls. But dry ships was my best and worst trade during that time period. But you can see where the problem is here. There's a lot of opportunity on this particular chart to make money. We could buy here in the valleys and wait for the increase. We could short at the peaks, and as the stock dropped down, we could buy back down in these lower ranges. But especially with a volatile stock like this, we just don't know the future. That position we just discussed, GMCR, hey, great, had that great move after the earnings announcement. But if the earnings were poor, couldn't that stock also have dropped 18 points? That's why we use the put as protection for long stock positions, because we don't want to get caught with a 20, 30, or 40 percent loss. The reason why is that math doesn't behave like we, like we expect it to. This is part of the reason why most investors haven't discovered what Kurt refers to as the holy grail of trading. Now, if we just look at basic common sense, and if Kurt would have asked me this three years ago when I was on the phone with him, if he would have asked me, hey, Mike, if you're trading a long stock and that stock drops 10%, what would you have to gain to get back to break even? Now, a lot of us would answer, hey, I just need a 10% gain to get back to break even, don't I? Well, the answer is no. I would need about an 11.1% gain in order to get back to break even. If I had a 25% loss on a stock, if earnings came out and it was poor and the stock just plummeted, and I had a 25% unrealized loss, I haven't closed it yet, essentially I need a 33% gain just to get back to break even. If I have a 33% loss, 
I'm going to need a 55% gain or a 50% gain just to get back to break even. Now, this is what we're seeing here. 10% loss, you need an 11.1% gain to get back to break even. This is referred to as gambler's ruin, the martingale. As I go higher with losses, if I have that 33% loss, we need a 50% gain just to get back to break even. And of course, if we suffered a 50% loss on our stock, we didn't have any protection in place, or if we even had a stop order and the stock gap down, we're going to need a 100% gain to get back to break even. Now, keeping with the concept of common sense math, if I have a 10% loss and I need 11.1% gain to get back to break even, or if I, I'm sorry, if I have a 50% loss and I need a 100% gain to get back to break even, if I have a 5% loss, I just divide by 10, does that mean I just need a, uh, I'm sorry, just double it, does that mean I need a 10% gain to get back to break even? No, if I have a 5% loss, I only need about a 5.62% gain to get back to break even. Now what's more realistic in the market? Taking a risky position, having a 50% loss, and then expecting to see a 100% gain? We're trading with protection, having a 5% loss, and then only needing a 5.62% gain to get back to break even. Which do we think is more realistic? Now, folks that we don't consistently profit in the stock market is because we don't know the math, we don't understand the underlying math that follows that principle. It's beyond picking stocks and timing trades. It's about limiting your risk, keeping in protected positions so you never suffer a loss where you're scrambling to take on riskier positions just to get back to break even. Now, would you be surprised to learn that you can be wrong more often than right and still make money? Let's think back to that GMCR position for a moment. Kurt was risking $5.90. It's the most he could have lost on the position even if GMCR went down to zero. But when the stock took off, he was able to make $10.90 of profit. Well, He's risking nickels to make dimes. Let's see how that would play out. We're going to navigate over to the radioactive trading screen right now. And I'm in the main, oh, hold on, I apologize here. Let me move this over. There we go. Let me slide that on over there and open that up full screen for everyone. And I'm in the resources tab on radioactive trading. And what we're going to want to do is go to the trade simulator tool. Now what the trade simulator tool is going to show us is a simulation of a trading record. Let's assume that we're going to see how our trading record will work. If every time we're right, we're expecting to make 10%, and when we're wrong, we're going to limit that to only 10% loss. And we're going to take a probability of about 50%. What I'm going to do is flip a coin 100 times. Heads, I win and make 10%. Tails. I lose 10%, and we're going to simulate starting off with a count value of $10,000. Now, down at the bottom, we see the results. Now, this position, this track record is horrendous. We're only right 42 times out of 100, 42% of the time. We have 58% losses. So at one point, we are able to take our $10,000 and almost double it up to $18,719, but our ending amount, would be only $1,200. We have close to an 88% loss on our portfolio. Well, all we have to do is have more wins, right? We just have to make sure that we're right more often than wrong in order to make money. Well, let's go ahead and refresh this. All right, we're right 50% of the time, so we did a little bit better. We increased the high value, well, our high value, I should say, was $15,000, but we still ended with a 40% loss over a long time horizon. Well, we've got to be right more often than wrong. Now well, here we're right 51% of the time. That's still not good. And this is random every time, so we're just going to try to find. There we go. This is what we want to see, isn't it? So we have a great or a pretty decent trading record. We're right 58% of the time. We took our high value for account up to $30,000. And we ended up over the time horizon tripling our account value, $30,000, 127. That looks fantastic. Now we did have a little bit of a scare here. The low value during this trading record, we were down 38%. Yeah, maybe we would have abandoned this trading record at that time. You know, after we suffered several losses and saw a 38% decrease in our portfolio, maybe 
we would have maneuvered away from this. We would have stopped focusing on this. But let's say we stuck with it. So we did have a low value of $6,270, and we ended up tripling our portfolio. But what's possible? In this trade simulator tool, I have a default selection, and I'm going to go to the married put selection. And I'm actually going to adjust this a little bit. This is a basic view of, let's say that our target return was 10% when we're right, and we're risking 6% when we're wrong. Well, here with a great trading record, we write 57% of the time, we took that high value up to almost $200,000, and because we won over here, this is our win-loss record, because we had four wins in a row, we never dropped below our initial starting point. Well, that's probably more of a little bit of luck than anything else, just random uh, occurrence of what's possible with our win-loss record. Let's change this a little bit. Let's lower our expectation when we're right to, let's say, about 8%. At the same time, let's take our loss limit down to 4%. Is it possible to trade where you're only risking 4%? Absolutely. We're going to take a look at that in just a little bit. Now, what happened here? Now, we didn't make it. Whoop, I'm sorry. What happened here? We were right 50% of the time. 50% of the time, we had wins. And we won 8% when we were right, and then we lost 4% when we were wrong. The account value moved up to $72,000, and our ending amount was $60,000, potentially. Now, what does that mean? Remember our other record. We were right 58% of the time and took our account value up to $30,000. Here, we were right about even 50-50, and we more than doubled that result. And look at our loss limit, only $9,500. So we didn't really have a scare. We'd only lost about 5% of our account value when we started, and we you know, went up about uh, six times our account value here. What happens if we're wrong more often than right? Let's keep running the simulation, see what happens. How about this? We were right only 48% of the time. We were wrong more often than we were right. Account value at one point was down to $9,600. That's too not, not too much of a scare, is it? It's only down 4%. But... Over a long time horizon, the potential is to make about $48,000, almost five times what we started with, being wrong more often than right, but controlling the one aspect we can't control. Can I control in the market how often I'm right? No. Can I control how much money I'm going to make on a position when I'm right? No, I can't. I can set my goals to be if I get an 8% return on the position, I'm going to liquidate it and move on, but the position might only reach a profit of 4 or 5%. And I just might have to take that. What is the one thing I can control? The one thing that I can control in the market is limiting my risk using puts as a protection. I can limit my risk to single digits and still have the unlimited upside profit potential. All right, let's go back to our slideshow here. That's the problem. We talked about why hasn't it been solved. Well, we were looking in the wrong places. A lot of there's a lot of value picking systems that are out there, time trading software, stop orders can come back to haunt you. Diversification is taught, and diversification is uh, something that I still apply in my portfolio with the protective married put positions. But think about this, if you were diversified during the market crash of 2008, if you had 35 stocks, how did that work out? Well, it didn't work out too well. You now have 35 stocks that might be down a total of 30, 35%. And, of course, we have a lot of our investors, a lot of our attendees are using covered calls right now as a way to hedge their positions. And that's fantastic. I mean, that's a valid method, but there's a secret hidden problem with covered calls, isn't there? Now, let's just talk briefly about stop orders. This is something that I always like to show during these presentations. This is a position uh, back in 07. It was Dactronics that Kurt was looking at. And right around this time period, after a good dividend payment, two-to-one split, and good earnings, Kurt was looking to open the position at around $30 per share. Well, if he followed the standard rules of a stop loss and he applied a 10% stop loss to this position, he'd have a stop set at $27. Well, the day after he would have entered the position, what happened? The earnings did not impress, even though they were up, but projecting forward, it did not impress, or probably didn't match expectations and the stock plummeted before the market opened. So it opened at about $24 and went down from there to about $23, $22.80. What's the problem with the stop order? 
Well, the problem with that stop order is that it is just a market order. You're basically saying, if this is triggered, go ahead and close my position for the worst possible price. So when the market opens at $23, the $27 stop order is triggered, but the stock couldn't be sold at $27. It was possibly sold at $23, $22 per share, maybe even lower. And that's a loss that you can't take to suffer. Remember that Martingale slope. If we suffer a 25% loss, we're going to need a 33% gain to get back to break even. If we suffer a 33% loss, we're going to need a 50% gain to get back to break even. The stock picking, well, trying to time trades and uh, pick stocks, the market's bigger than we are. A lot of the movement that we see has happened before we can get into the position. Timing the trades, we talked about that. We don't really know the future. We can't control the gains. We can't control how often we're going to be right. Stop orders are not reliable. They can get violated with market swings. Diversification, it's part of the solution, but without protection in place, you can have many positions. Those of you who trade covered calls, and we'll take a look at this um, shortly, so a covered call position can generate a good monthly return, if you're right, but if the stock moves up 15%, you've capped your gains to only 3 or 4%. Maybe that matches your expectations, but if I'm trading 10 covered call positions and eight of them go up and I get assigned and I make my 3% return, that's great. You know, I take in about 24%. Let's say the ninth position kind of dropped a little bit, so I still had about a 0% loss, but then the 10th position had a bad earnings announcement and the pre-market or after-market dropped 25%. Where does that leave me? Well, it leaves me being right 80% of the time, almost 90% of the time. Eight out of our eight or nine of our trades we might consider successful or break even, but we still came out of the month with a loss. We gained 24% on the eight successful positions, and we lost 25% on the one that dropped against us. That's not really a reliable way to trade. It doesn't happen all the time, but this is where people get stuck. One or two losses can wipe out three or four months of previous gains, especially with the spread trades. Now, what's possible? What's possible is reversing the covered call chart. Now, those of you who trade covered calls, we know the standard profit and loss of a covered call. Just draw it here real quickly. We have a capped gain, and then we have a loss on the downside. We're still risking 96 97% of our position. Now, what happens if we reverse the covered calls trade, and rather than buying a stock and selling a call to hedge or for a little bit of protection, let's say that we buy shares of stock, and at the same time, buy that in the money, far out in time, put option. Now here's an example with a stock called Sybase. The position was open at 3071. The September 09 35 put was open for 590. So the total investment again is 3661. Well remember we're guaranteed an exit of $35. So we're risking $1.61 or only 4.4% of our initial capital. So the possibility number one is limited risk positions, single digit risks with an unlimited upside profit potential. That's what we want to see. That's what we're looking for with the radioactive trading initial setup. This is how we open all of our positions. Now the income methods, what does this add to the game? What does this add to what we're going to do? Well, it's possible to enter other trades off of this married put position. Use the married put position as a springboard to launch other trades. And there are 10 different income methods discussed in the blueprint. Now we started off this side base position with a risk of 161 or 4.4%. We have a guaranteed exit several months out in time of $35. Now wait, what happens if side base moves up? Say there's an increase in the stock price. Well, we could easily sell the May, in this case, look to sell the May 35 call for $1.61. Now what does that do to our position? Well, our initial risk was $1.61. We, after we wait for the stock to make a move, we can sell the May 35 call for $1.61 in this case, and we've canceled that original at risk. This is possibility number two, is bulletproof trading. Taking our stock with the put option for limited single-digit risk, and then applying the various income methods. Now selling a call against the RPM, this is called income method number one. And I'm going to show you a recent example from my personal account where I was able to essentially do the same trade on the stock of uh, silver wheat. Okay? But that's what we want to do. We can take that risk of only 4.4% 4 
make adjustments discussed in the blueprint, the 10 different income methods, to pay for that at risk amount and have a bulletproof position. We'll still have several months to go. From May to September, we'll have four months where we have no risk on our position, still have potentially an unlimited upside profit potential after the call expires, and then be able to do other adjustments as well. Now, before we discuss what is different now, what I would like to know is after we've gone through this, I just want to ask everyone in the audience, are you happy with your trading over the last 12 months? Think about your track record over the last 12 months, and are you happy with your trading results? All right, so these results are coming in pretty good. Um, got about 50% of our vote in. I'm going to leave this open for just a little bit longer. All right, I'm going to go ahead and close the poll. I want to thank everyone for uh, getting their votes in. Let me share those results with you. Okay, so we have 14% of our attendees saying yes, they're happy with their trading results over the last 12 months. Well, we want to see that higher, don't we? We want to see more people being happy with their trading results. 57% said no, they're not currently happy with their trading results, and we've got 30% who said mixed emotions. Well, as Kurt always likes to do, I'm going to congratulate everyone who voted in any of the three groups. For those of you who answered yes, what we like to say is that part of the reason why they're happy with their trading results is because they're always doing things like this. They're always coming to uh, what free webinars that are available or learning new things, learning new investment approaches, sharpening the saw, getting more tools in their toolbox, for example, or more arrows in their quiver. The 50% of you who said no, we want to congratulate you as well. We know, I know personally what it's like to not be happy with my trading results over the last year. But we want to congratulate you because you're in the right place. You're in the right place to learn more and to learn the solutions to some of the problems that have caused you to probably answer no. And the 30% of you who said mixed emotions want to congratulate you as well. I've, I'm familiar with that. Kurt was familiar with that. He saw his first two months, had a great trading record, great returns. But then, unfortunately, he had a bad trade that wiped, it, wiped out his savings. He had mixed emotions. He saw there was profit available in the market but then he got wiped out. I've had the same thing where I felt like a couple of uh, times in a six to 12 month period trading covered calls and calendar spreads that you know I had one or two bad trades that got away from me and it always felt like I was treading water. I was not getting ahead. Mixed emotions is really code for no. We've seen the potential for some gain in the market, but at the same time, we're not really happy. Okay, so kind of saying mixed emotions is really code for no, but that's okay. I've been there and uh, I've gone through that as well. I'm going to follow this up with another poll. Let's just think about this for a second. Looking back over your trades over the last 12 months, if you would have kept all your wins from last year, but limited your losses to 6% or less, how would you have answered that question? Would have you answered, yes, I'm happy with my trading results, would you have still said no, but you would have been a little bit closer to yes, or you would have still said no or mixed emotions? So if you kept all of your wins from last year, uh, but still were able to limit your losses to 6%, how would you have answered? All right. Okay, I'm going to leave this poll open for about another 10 or 15 seconds. And let's go ahead now and close that poll, and I'll share the results, and then we're going to move on. I made everyone a promise that we're going to focus on the Power Options tools. We've got plenty of time to do that. All right, so turning this around, 82% would have said yes, they would have been happy with the results. Now, remember the question before. We had 57% of our attendees saying no, they weren't happy with the results, and 30% saying mixed emotions. So really 87% of us were not happy with our trading results over the last 12 months. But if you would have been able to keep your wins and limit your losses, we've almost reversed this. 82% would have said yes, they would have been happy with their results. 12% would have said no, but been closer to yes. Might not still be getting everything they wanted, but they would have been closer than what they were over the last 12 months. So 94% would have been closer to saying yes, they were happy with their trading results. 
and we have 6% who still said no or mixed emotions, that, that limiting their risk to only 6% but keeping all of their wins would not have put them in the yes category. Now, maybe those 6% of you that answered no, you still wouldn't have been happy. Maybe you have uh, too much expectations of what the market can give to you. Um, and maybe you're over trading a little bit too much. There's some possible things. But I'll invite anyone, uh, of course, anyone can send me an email or give us a call at the office if you have questions. But those 6% of you that have still said no are mixed emotions, what I would encourage you to do is write in to support at Radioactive Trading or call the Power Options office. And I just want to know some background of what your expectations are and what you're looking to do and uh, how, of course, we can still help you further. And of course, that applies to everyone joining us today, but those 6% of you, I'd really like to hear from you about what your expectations are and why you wouldn't have been happy with your trading results. All right, so we've gone through the basic radioactive uh, setup. We've discussed the possibility of using an income method. We've talked about sort of what's different now, entering a limited risk position and having an unlimited upside profit potential. That's the foundations of radioactive trading. That's where we start and then we use the income methods to cancel that risk and protect our positions, limit the losses. Art just asked a good question. He's kind of f forcing me into where I want to go now because I made a promise and I really want to get into it. But Art wants to know, is 6% max loss a good guide for original setup? Absolutely, Art. I think it is. And for P where, what we want to address now, what we really want to get into now is for those of you who are self-directed. Or for those of you who have your own trading style, for Art who wants to find positions that have less than 6% at risk, how do we do that? How do we apply this method we've just been discussing, this everything I've given away for free here today about limiting your risk with that initial setup, keeping your risks and your losses below uh, 9 8%, for example, and then applying the income methods? How are we going to be able to do that in the real market? Well, to do that, let's navigate over to the Power Option suite of tools. And uh, hold on one second here. Let's just slide this over and open that up to full screen. All right, now I apologize for some of the jumpiness that you might be seeing. Just got a new computer with a dual screen setup and I'm still getting familiar with it. For self-directed options investors, a lot of uh, investors who have purchased the blueprint, what we're going to use is the Power Option suite of tools to number one, find RPMs that match our personal risk threshold. There's a variety of ways that you can do RPMs on ETFs. Uh, you can do them on dividend paying stocks. You can do them on the stocks that you normally trade. If you use fundamental or technical criteria, you can set up these limited risk positions on those uh, the normal way you trade right now and then be able to take advantage of the 10 different income methods. How are we going to do that? Well, when we log on to Power Options, as we talked earlier, Power Options is a suite of tools that supports over 23 different strategies. We're going to access the Married Put tab. Now, this is a unique form of Married Put that we use to enter our positions, but we still have the availability to do that. Long stock plus long put. Kurt refers it to an RPM, as radioactive profit machine, but uh, basically still a Married Put setup. So from the Married Put menu, one of the available strategies, we're going to go ahead and access the search tool. The search tool allows us to scan the entire universe of options to find only those positions that match our personal risk reward tolerance. When I first run this search, what is pulled up for me, you can see it here down at the bottom. We're looking at the default radioactive screen. This is the general starting point that Kurt uses to identify his RPMs. Now, taking the first result, the system went out, scanned the entire universe of options, and it found these positions that matched this criteria. Well, let's just take the first one. We're looking at Precision Cast Parts Corp, stock symbol PCP. It's kind of strange, but uh, the last stock price is 123.98. Currently trading at 123.98. We're shown that we can buy a January 145 put option in the money, far out in time, for $24.90. Now, it's pretty expensive, doesn't it? No, makes our total net debit $148.88, but since we have the 145 put, we're only risking $3.88, or 2.6% of our initial investment. Now, this is just a description of what's shown on the Power Options tools. What we want to get into is how are these results identified, and can you identify your own results? Absolutely. 
Now, one of the things I'd mentioned early on is that precision cast parts at 123 and the option ask is almost $25. That looks a little bit expensive. I'll be honest with you. With my trading account, I'm usually not buying stocks that are higher than $35, $40 per share. So to buy a put option at $25, that's a little bit out of my range. But that's perfectly fine. What we want to do is scroll down below the listed trades, and we can take a look at the default selection that's set up. The system, this default search that Kurt uses as a stepping stone or as a starting point, is looking for all put, put options that are all months out in time, at least 150 days to 900 days out in time. So we have to be at least five months out in time. We're not allowing the put option to be more than 20% in the money. We limited this range in or out of the money. Why? When the blueprint, Kurt discusses that there is such a thing as taking on too little risk. If I'm looking at a $50 stock, I know that I can go out and potentially buy a 100 strike put. It's 100% in the money. It's 50 points above the stock price, and I'm going to have to pay $50 and maybe 10 cents because it's so deep in the money, it's all intrinsic value. So I've got a 100 strike put. I've got $100.10 100 invested in the position. I've got a risk of about 0.1%. That's fantastic, isn't it? Well, not really. When I enter into a position like that that's too deep in the money, my expectancy for profit is extremely low. I need the stock to move up significantly, almost close to $100, even though I'm only risking $0.10, cents, to be able to correctly apply the income methods and make adjustments without adding more risk. That's the key. You, you want to make these adjustments correctly after you get into a position. But let's go back and discuss a little bit more about how to do that. Now, the maximum risk range, you, you might ask, we're looking for a limitation here between 2.5 and 9%. You might ask, why limit the lower range to only 2.5%? That goes back to what we were just discussing. Okay, I have my risk limited to be no, more, no less than 2.5% because I don't want to be too deep in the money. I don't want to take on too little of a risk. Art, you prompted the question uh, earlier on, is 6% a good target? I think it is. My personal risk threshold for an RPM is that I'm not going to take greater than a 7% at risk. So I'll just click into that field and change that uh, to less than 9% to be less than 7%. Over here on the right, Kurt uses a stock range between $9 and $200. I've already expressed how that's way outside of my personal range. So I'm just going to make an adjustment here, and I'm only going to look for stocks, actually I'll trade the lower range too, I'm going to look for stocks between $5 and $45 per share. Now as I scroll down a little bit further, I will tell you that here in the recommended list section, we have selected IBD 100 and Canceling. This is the stock list that Kurt prefers to use. But if I have my own method of trading, if I prefer to look for stocks that have a certain earnings per share growth, price per earnings, maybe a certain RSI, for example, I can change this and select No Lists, and then just plug those filters into the screen. And just for a basic example, I'll put in that earnings per share growth, at least 7%. Um, Let's say I want a broker recommendation of at least uh, less than 2.6%. I want to look for stocks that pay a dividend of at least 2%. Kurt uses an average stock volume as a default of at least 300,000 shares per day. My personal preference might be around 750,000 shares per day. This filter is uh, using the, um, I'm sorry, is measured in thousands. So I'm just going to plug that in. And if I wanted to use other filters such as the RSI or Bollinger Bands, Shares outstanding, for example, percent of 52-week range, where you could just plug those values in as well. So what have I done here? Well, I've taken the basic setup, but I've decided to look across the entire universe of options rather than a limited stock list. But I'm using certain filters, such as earnings per share. And you know what? I'm going to put in a price to earnings between 0 to 50 as well. But you can customize this any way you want to. As a general rule, going back to Art's question, what I've seen is that Kurt's RPMs typically range in risk from about 4% to about 8% when he originally opens them. So Art, is 6% a good target? Yeah, I mean, that falls almost right in the middle of where Kurt's selection is. I myself find that I'm usually entering positions between about a 4.5% to a 7% risk. I just opened one that we're going to look at in a little bit where my maximum risk was 7%. By the way, if you wanted to look just for married puts on ETFs, you could do that as well. From the stock list, I could just select to screen against indexes, ETFs, and holders. Or 
if I wanted to leverage ETFs or inverse ETFs, if I'm actually bearish, I can look for RPMs on inverse ETFs and apply the 10 income methods that way. So as the market's dropping in price, my inverse ETFs are moving up in price. So however you like to trade, you can customize this search screen to identify just those positions that match what you want. All right, so let's submit our settings. We've gone ahead and made my changes based on what I want to see. We'll go ahead and hit submit. And now we'll get a list of our positions that match that criteria. Now, you see some common names in here. I do sometimes refer to these search criteria that I use from time to time as the water cooler stocks. Um, I've got it, things here such as Bristol Myers Squibb, uh, Kraft Foods. Those of you that have listened to me on various webinars know that I'm in a Kraft position right now that I opened in December. I have the put out to January 2011. I originally opened the position with a 5.5% risk. I've been bulletproof since February. I'm collecting a dividend. Um, I'm still able to collect a dividend with no risks when I apply two different income methods. Hmm. And I still have the opportunity to do more income methods as the stock continues to move up in price. Uh, Comcast and so forth. Now, this list still might be too much for me. You see down here at the bottom that I have a risk, I'm uh, sorry, I have a total result of 193. Now, let me just adapt a few more criteria here. What I'm going to do is... Uh, change this to be between 4 to 7 percent. I'm going to limit that risk and resubmit it. This might cut out about half of those results. Yeah, well, no, a little bit less than that. I only cut out about 60, so I still have 138 total results. But you see how you can keep customizing this search tool. You can narrow it down to just what you want to see. Now, I am sorting this by lowest uh, maximum risk from lowest to highest, but does this mean I'm going to jump on the first position? We'll look at that Bristol Myers position, trading at 25.88. We're shown that we could purchase the March 29 put option for 455. And this gives us a maximum risk of 4.1% between now and March expiration. And the annual dividend yield here is about 5%. But we're not going to see all of that because we're not 365 days out in time. And Barry just asked, can you sort using the IBD 100 as a starting point? A Yes, that's where we originally started. We were using the IBD 100 and canceling list that you can select from that main menu. That's the starting point when you first pull up that default radioactive screen, Barry. Um, could I now say, show me just those stocks in the IBD 100 that match this list? No, but let's make that change, Barry. Again, very simple. Let's scroll down to the bottom. Okay, so I ran my universe of stocks that matched my criteria. I was using no lists. So I opened it up to the entire universe of options. But let me keep these new adjustments I made for my earnings per share growth, price per earnings, dividend yield, and then take a look at just stocks in the IBD 100. So I'm going to keep all of my other criteria, but now limit it to just IBD 100 stocks. There's one. There's Hasbro. And those of you who joined me Saturday saw me discuss this position as well. Hasbro currently trading at 42.71. have a January 45 strike put at 4.90. Uh, so our maximum risk is 261, or 5.5%. Now, let me open this up to the IBD 100 and cancel them. Let's increase that a little bit, see if we get more results. And if I wanted, no, okay, if I wanted to, Barry, I could also look at just the S&P 500 or the S&P 5 star stocks. Okay, so this one result, Hasbro. Let's go back to discussing if we had more results. And I actually want to do that. Let's go back to the no list. Just because that position we originally saw when I was using no lists and not limiting it to that IBD 100 list, we have ADP at the top of the screen now. This is in real time. But just because this has the lowest maximum risk, is this the position that I'm going to trade? No. I want to do further research and analysis. And to do that with one click, we're going to use that more information button over on the left-hand side. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a look at the stock chart. The married put setup is a bullish setup. We're expecting the stock to move up in price. Now, you can customize big charts and save your settings with a cookie. I have Bollinger Bands set here, relative strength, and some MACD information. Now, let's say I look at this chart, and it looks to me it's more than flat. I'm not intrigued by this chart, so I'm going to go ahead and just close the window. Now, I'll move to the next position. Avon Products matches my dividend requirement, matches my maximum risk, still at about 4.2%. Let's take a look here, and I'll take a look at big charts again. Hmm, no, the stock has had a tumble. Great thing, if I was trading Avon over here, I would have wanted to have protection in place. 
But now it's started to come back up in price and it's crested a little bit above the upper Bollinger Band. Not that I'm going to tell you how I analyze stocks or what I'm looking for, but you know this might be a decent chart to look for. It might be something that matches what you're seeing. Okay, so take a look at the stock chart. Looks good. I like this on the second position. What's my next step? I'm going to use that More Information button again, and I'm going to link actually to the news and to the profile. I want to see Avon products. I want to make sure what profile, sector, and industry it's in, but I really want to take a look at the headlines there. I want to make sure that there's nothing too strong, that there's nothing, um, I'm sorry, no recent headlines that would cause me pause to enter the position. What am I going to do next? Well, this is a great position, January 35, but what if I wanted to see, I see below that Axis has March options. What if I wanted to see if Avon had March options to give me more time, but still was under my 7% risk? What if I wanted to maybe take on a higher risk, but if there was a 32 and a half January opportunity? Well, let's compare it now. I'm going to do is go to the search by symbol screen from my results in the Avon position. Here we see the January 35 strike put position has a risk of 4.1%. That's where we just linked over from. But there are other opportunities here, aren't there? The 34 strike put, just a dollar uh, strike below, option ask of 430. My risk now would be $1.81 or 5.1%. But the January 33 strike put still is within my risk threshold of under 7%. Why would I choose the January 33 put over the January 35 put that was at the top of my list? Well, if I'm analyzing the married put positions, the 35 put is 11% in the money here. So the rules in the blueprint discuss that when the stock moves up in price, usually trading right around the strike price of your put, that's when you want to look to apply the income methods. So in this case, if I have a stronger sentiment that Avon at 31.51, it's more likely in the next 30 to 45 days that Avon would be around $33 per share and I would apply one of the income methods at that point, maybe it's okay to take a slightly higher risk. It's still within my threshold. It's a 6% at risk. It's still within my range. But I have a better expectancy of the stock maybe hitting that price and then moving on. I'm sorry, doing an, doing an adjustment with one of the income methods. Okay, so this is what you want to do. Compare it. After you've looked at the stock chart, you've identified your positions, you've looked at the stock chart, you like the chart, link to the search by symbol tool here to say, okay, are there any others that are still within my threshold and match my expectations better, even though I might be taking a greater risk. Okay. Uh, Barry just asked, uh, again, he's, he just brought up the point that the option chains that you use have weekly options. Absolutely. You can scan for weekly options. I'll add real quick, you don't want to open a married put with a weekly option, but maybe there's some opportunity to apply an income method to a stock you're using that has weekly options. All right. Let's go ahead and close the search by symbol tool. We want to go back to our search screen. The last step we want to do on power options is sort of run our what-if scenarios. And to do that, we'll select the profit and loss chart. Now this will give you the standard hockey stick graph that we saw before. Okay, we see our risk of 4.2%. This is based on 100 shares. If you wanted to analyze this, you could scroll up to the top and, uh, I'm sorry, analyze this using different shares. You could plug in a higher value if you want to analyze what this would look like with 200 shares, 300 shares. You can just make that change and hit submit. You see here what we talked about earlier when we saw in that GMCR position. As the stock moved up, the put does not drop one to one. Now the blue hockey stick graph, this is our risk rewarded expiration. If we hold the position all the way to January 2011 and make no adjustments, this is what we'd see. But you see at the halfway point, it's more curved. So we're not, the put won't lose one to one. And down below, if we wanted to see what our position would look like, if uh, Avon did say move up to $33, uh, by mid-August, let's just, oh, let's say late August, by 8.30, if uh, Avon moved up to $33, Let's put in our what-if scenario. Well, you see we'd have about $146 gain on our stock. Um, we'd have roughly $134 loss on our put, and that would give us uh, a profit of $12. All right? And, uh, of course, you see that our original investment was $36.54. In order to realize a small profit here, did I need the stock to move up to $36.54? No, I didn't. I just needed to move up slightly. But I wouldn't liquidate the position for that small of a gain. Um, what we would look at here is the, 
I'm sorry, what we're looking at here as the stock moves up is just some of those, I'm sorry, how, where would I apply an income method? And let's talk more about that right now. Let's go back to the main slides here. Okay, I just want to go back. What's different now? What I want to talk about is, okay, so we've entered a position, we've analyzed it, we put it into the portfolio, and uh, we want to talk about with bulletproofing with the more. Now, I realize I've gone over time and I apologize. I'm going to review two of the income methods and discuss that. And what I want to show is a recent example of bulletproofing with income method number one in my personal account. I'm going to show that in the Power Options portfolio tools as well. And then I'm going to discuss uh, the variations. First, I'm going to answer a couple of these quick questions that come in. Ken out wants to know, when buying the put, is open interest important? Yes, I feel that it is. Um, I can use a screen on Power Options to look for the, I'm sorry, the volume today or the open interest. And uh, that would uh, give me the positions um, that I want to see that match that criteria. That's one of the filters you can use. Right now on the exchange, there's a problem where our data vendor did not receive open interest this morning. So if I used an open interest screen of greater than zero right now, it would have come up with no results. Just a quick thing in the progress, and we're probably going to have that fixed real soon. Rich, uh, I wanted to know, can you show gold stock optionality? I'm not going to be able to because I'm already slightly over time. I want to run through these two things discussing the income methods because we promised we would do that. But Rich, if you send me an email to support at radioactivetrading.com, I can easily discuss with you some of the opportunities that the search tool would provide on uh, a particular stock and any questions that you have about that. So I'll encourage you to send that email after the presentation. Um, Barry wants to know, does the calculator have the ability to present dynamic graphs like TOS? Well, it does show you the, the range of if you're, you have the, uh, sorry, profit and loss at expiration, and then you have the curved graph. Every time you make a change and run the simulation of what would happen if the stock was trading here, that curved red line is showing you the profit and loss at that point. If you want to see the standards of, um, you know, see the charts that have, uh, what would my position look like in two weeks, three weeks, five weeks, eight weeks, 10 weeks, 15 weeks, 20 weeks, and so forth, all in the same chart. I mean, we are going to do some enhancements to that, but no, we don't show the graphs like that. It just gets too overly complicated at one point or another, so we've never added that in. But we'll have some features added in the near future. Okay. Is it possible in this market to bulletproof with income method number one? A lot of people have been asking these questions. Well, I'm going to be honest with you. It depends on the market conditions depends on the stock selection. We saw that Sybase example where we had $1.61 at risk, the stock moved up, the 35 call was sold for $1.61 which canceled the risk. Well, let me show you a recent position with income method number one, which is given away for free in the sketch, selling a call. On May 21st, 2010, silver stock, silver Wheaton, so Rich, I'm going to discuss a silver stock here, kind of mining stock, but not a gold stock, but we'll talk about that later. Um, purchase shares of silver wheat and at 1720. At the same time, I bought a December put, so with seven months out in time, I bought the 20 strike put, about 280 in the money, for $4.30. So my total investment on the position was 2150, but I'm guaranteed an exit of 20 points. So what am I risking here? I'm risking $1.50 or 7%. Yes, that is at my maximum threshold that we discussed earlier using the search tool there. Okay? So what happens? Now I tried to, I had to put these slides together quickly when I found out Kurt wasn't going to be with us, so I've apologized for some of the formatting. I entered the Silver Wheaton position. 2170, oh, I'm sorry, 1720 was right in this range here um, when I purchased it, around May 28th when I purchased the position. Saw Silver Wheaton move up. I actually didn't do an income method at this first jump, and I missed it. And Silver Wheaton came down a little bit. But then it came back up in price. And yes, I realized I just sort of drew a happy face there, and that was not my intention. But what I ended up doing after the stock moved up, this is on 628 when it moved up the second time. What I was able to do is use the Power Options tools to analyze a potential income method. And I'm, we're going to show that in just a second. So 628, Silver Wheaton opens at 2145. I missed the first jump, but I got the second jump. My initial risk was $1.50. I was able to sell to open the August 21 call. Now, why did I want to use the 21 call? Well, I could have used the 20 call, but it was now in the money. When using income method number one, I'm only going to use the 20 strike or higher because that's the strike price of my put. I don't want to rush in too soon 
and sell a call below the protective put strike price. But I was able to sell the August 21 call for $1.48. So, assuming if the call expires worthless, you know, uh, I believe it was uh, 48, 55 days away, my new at risk on this position would be only two cents. The stock moved up as I expected. Used the power options tools to analyze an opportunity, and I saw that I could sell the 21 call for a reasonable profit and cancel most of my risk, just about bulletproof. Well, how would this look on power options? Let's go ahead and take a look. I'm gonna go into the portfolio tools. After you've identified a position, run your what-if scenarios, done your analysis, you'd add it to the portfolio to paper trade and track the position. Hmm. EPB is another position we're gonna talk about in just a moment, but let me pull up the SLW trade. Now, here's my original position. I've entered it twice here just for the view. My original position on top, one married put, bought shares of stock at 1720, bought the 20 put for 430. Now let's just go ahead and take a look at the initial profit and loss chart on the position. We'll see the standard hockey stick graph risking 7% or $150 and I have an infinite maximum risk. Now we're going to take a look. As I'm tracking this position, the stock has moved up. Now, now it's still moved up. It's at 1935. There was a dip that we're going to look at in a little bit, but it's moved back up. So if I just had the married put in place, now I wanted to analyze what could I do next. What we'll do in the portfolio tools, we're going to click on position actions and position analysis. This is going to link us to a page which gives us a breakdown of our original position. We're going to be able to view the profit and loss chart again of that original position and see where we stand right now. Okay, so we see the similar profit and loss chart. Current option bid, current risk. As I scroll down further, I can see my original position value of $2,150, or $2,150. I do have a gain right now of 0.7% after 74 days, but that's not good enough for us, is it? We want to generate some income. We want to enhance that return. And if I held this all the way to expiration, made no adjustments, and the stock stayed at 1934, I'd have a loss of 7%. That's the maximum we entered. Well, as we scroll down, we now see that we have some rollout opportunities, don't we? We may consider, here's income method number one, we may consider selling a call. Well, I have the August 20 and the September 20 call that are available right now, call bid of 80 cents and 37 cents. Remember, our maximum risk was $1.50. And if I go out further to September, oh, it's 80 cents. The August 21 call, which is pretty far out of the money right now, only has a bit of 13 cents or 47 cents if I go out to September. So maybe these don't match my requirements. But if I wanted to analyze them further, Let's just take a look at that August 20 call, small premium of 31 cents, only 18 days left expiration. If we wanted to simulate what this would look like if we applied this potential opportunity to our married put, we use the more information button next to the rollout opportunity, and I'll click on simulate trade new. The simulation on the left in the red is our original position, current return of the 0.8.7%, maximum risk of 7%, and then over on the right, we're shown what would happen if we sold this August 20 call for 37 cents. Now, we don't do too well on this one because the premium's lower. And we do reduce our maximum risk to 5.4%. We can make a potential turn of 3.7%. Stock's not really trading as high as we want to. And down below, we see the graphs. Now, let me clean this up a little bit. This red line shows the original profit and loss, the original married put profit and loss chart. This curved black line shows us what we'd expect to see on August expiration. Why August expiration? Because that's when we're going to look to sell the call. So I can compare what my position might look like theoretically if I don't do this adjustment. And this blue line shows us what would happen if we do sell this income method number one against it. Hey, that's pretty interesting, isn't it? Small bump, but not a lot. All right, let me go ahead and close that down. And let's go back to the portfolio. Now, here's what we did. Here's what we were able to do after the stock had moved up in price, okay? We saw it on the chart. We sold the August on 628. We sold the August call for $1.48, and it's actually declined now to $0.15. Cents. I should really consider buying the close of this right now and maybe looking at another opportunity to generate more income. But the Power Options tools can show me that, too. 
all right? And here's what we're going to do. What happened to this position when I added this call and almost bulletproofed it? Let's take a look at the profit and loss chart of my existing married put with income method number one, essentially with a, a collar. Essentially what I have is a collar spread. I've got that uh, December 20 put, and I've got an August 21 call sold against it. So now, if the stock moves back up to $21, the maximum return I could expect is 12.3%. My maximum risk is 0.1%. Was I able to almost bulletproof this position using income method number one in this market? Yes. That I needed, did I need the stock to move in my desired direction and meet my expectations before I applied income method number one? Absolutely. You don't want to enter an income method as soon as you open the RPM. We're going to wait for the stock to move up and then sell a call against it or do one of the income methods after the market has made a move. I'm very happy with this position right now. As I mentioned, I might buy this back soon, buy this short call back soon for 15, 20 cents, and then look for another opportunity to generate more income, maybe selling the 20 call or doing a different income method of the 10 that are discussed in the blueprint. This is what's possible. We took an RPM that had a 7% risk. Stock moved up as we expected. We used one of the income methods to almost bulletproof the position. And now we're in a situation where we can roll this and still make 90% of what we expected to make and still move on forward. Uh, Barry wants to know, how long do you wait? Well, it depends on what I'm doing and it depends on what I'm looking for. Not trying to dodge the question, Barry. There is some discussion in the blueprint on that. But Silver Wheaton was more of an income generating. I follow this stock on a regular basis, so I look for the swings and the low points based on how I've been tracking it over the past two and a half years, kind of moving in and out, protected positions. Um, and this is what I was actually hoping would happen and I could achieve. I was hoping to do it in a 45-day time period. As you saw, I opened Silver Wheaton on 521, saw the gain that I wanted by 628. Um, if by 45 days Silver Wheaton had not done what I wanted to, I might have used one of the income methods to adjust the position maybe on the downside or do a neutral adjustment to generate some income. Really, I'm hoping to see a move in these situations in 45 days. But this leads me into the, a perfect segue into what I wanted to talk about next. And what I want to do is go back to our slideshow presentation. Oh, let me maneuver this as well. Okay. Now, um, I want to discuss income method number four. Income method number four, the reason why I want to discuss this, Barry, is what it leads to and what I'm doing now. Uh, some of the other positions I have open, and I'm going to quickly review that. I'm going to try to go through this quickly because I know I'm really over time. Income method number four, we look at an example for DIA that Kurt opened uh, a couple of years ago. He originally, this doesn't format right, and I apologize for that, um, but he originally looked at DIA at $115, sorry about that, $115 per share. At the same time, he bought a January 07, 119 put for five points. So his total investment was $120 here. Let me, let me use this. This might help a little bit. It was $120, but he's guaranteed an exit at 119. So his total risk is only $1. Over here, it's a little bit better view. Total cost is 120. He's insured at 119. So we're only risking one point on this position. All right. Now, what happens? 25 days later, the stock moves up in price, and the stock went from 115 to $120 on 1019. The 119 put option had moved from out of the money, in the money, excuse me, to now out of the money. The stock's above it. So the price fell from $5 to 205. Now what's interesting about that is when he opened the position and paid $5 for the put option, $4 of that was intrinsic value and only $1 was time premium. Now that the put is out of the money and trading at 205, that 205 is all time premium. This takes advantage of that ATM bell curve. Okay? For the put to drop 295, the stock had to go up five points. So he still has a gain. Now what he wanted to do is look at income method number four. And what he did is he sold to close his 119 put for 205 and saw an opportunity to buy a January 2008 128 strike put at 970. Now, this is a debit. This is the only income method that's done at a debit. So he increased his investment amount by $765. Okay, but why would we want to do that? We make the trade. We adjust the put, sell to close our existing put, buy to open the second put. We had our original investment of $120. We add $765 back into it. 
and now our total investment is 127.65. But what did Kurt do? He adjusted it to the 128 put. So now he has a guaranteed gain of 35 cents. No matter what DIA does after this, he's guaranteed to get 35 cents. If it continues to move up, he has an unlimited upside profit potential. If it drops in price, he's guaranteed. He's bulletproof on the position. So even though he added 765 into his total investment, bought stock at 115, bought the 119 put at five points, total invested was 120. When the stock moved up, he swapped his 119 put, he sold to close, it got 205, bought a further out in time higher strike put for 970, he increased his investment by 765, but now he's guaranteed a higher exit. Now, when Kurt did this, he was in this range here. This red area is when he applied this income method number four, and as you can see, the stock continued to move up. This is exactly where he wanted to be. Now, there's some other income method five and six, what Kurt refers to as the money nets, that he would have applied in here with the sudden spikes and the sudden dips. And, of course, um, DIA pays a dividend. So that's what you look for with income method number four. Now, why did I want to bring this up? I see there's some other questions, and I'm going to wrap this up quickly and then answer these questions, so please bear with me. Um, there are many ways to trade this technique. We talked about trading RPMs on common stocks. We look for those in the Power Options search screen. We talked about trading RPMs on ETFs, or even the inverse ETFs, if we're bearish. I can open a long inverse ETF and buy a long put, and if I'm bearish and the market's falling, my inverse ETFs are going to increase in price, and I can treat it as a bullish position. Or use your own trading style. What do I mean by that? During Saturday's presentation, the online seminar that Kurt and I were hosting, um, after the presentation, I'm sorry, I had a customer email me and said, during the seminar, someone mentioned a trade on EPB. Now, I was looking at EPB, it came up in the search results that I was using for a dividend payment that was up in price. Now, the customer mentioned, when I looked at the chain, there's literally no call premium for income. So, why would I do this? Why would I enter a position that has little or no call options, or little or no call premium, to try to generate income? Well, EPB matched what I was looking for. On 7-20-2010, I ran a personal search on uh, Power Options. Um, I started off with the standard radioactive settings, uh, IBD 100, less than 20% in the money. I wanted to have at least a 2% dividend. I was looking for a risk of less than 7%, and I was looking for a stock that had an X dividend date near to the opening price or earnings that were coming up in the near term. So one of the results that came up was EPB. It matched my specific risk threshold. I liked the chart. It had an annual 5% dividend. The X dividend date comes out on 728. So I own 720 at eight days left. And then the earnings were com are coming out, I should say, on 84. So I might get a little pop there, but I also wanted to get the dividend. Now mentioning the dividend, EPB is a limited partnership. Um, this means that it has specific specification specifications which are different from a standard stock or an ETF. If you're trading this in a cash account or a margin account, you might have extra tap and tax implications and might need an extra tax form, okay? I'm not making a suggestion or recommendation. I'm trading this in a retirement account, so I don't have to worry about that. But what was my response? Okay, there's still low income. There's still not a lot of premium on the calls, and I realized that. And this sort of goes back to what Barry was discussing about, um, you know, what, what would I look for? Um, uh, I'm sorry, what would I look for, for example, how long would I wait? Well, this is a different approach. When I do a dividend paying stock like this, I don't have that time frame of 45 days where I'm looking to make an adjustment. My answer was, I'm not, looking, I'm not expecting to use income method number one at all on this trade. I might not even use income method number six. My SEGA model, which is discussed in the blueprint for entering a stock or using the 10 different income methods, is that I'm bullish on EPB and I wanted to get in before the ex-dividend date. My expectations, EPB is going to move up in price. I can't guarantee that, but that's my expectation, just like it was on the Silver Wheaton position. Silver Wheaton, by the way, doesn't pay a dividend, okay? So I am looking to use income method number four that we just discussed on DIA to bulletproof with help from the dividends. So after I collect the dividend in August, if the stock moves up as I expected, I'm going to look for an income method number four opportunity to bulletproof. Now I still have between, let's say, end of August uh, or September through March expiration for a bulletproof position where I can still collect a dividend and still apply nine other income methods. 
my goal is a long-term hold for extended profit as opposed to income. So this is why I didn't look at the call premium when I was opening this RPM. I'm specifically never planning to use IM income method number one or income method number six. I'm looking to bulletproof in the near term, maybe the next 60 to 65 days with income method number four, maybe income method number three, and be able to collect the dividend after that. So you can, you can enter this, you can do these any way you want to. You can look for stocks that maybe have a high call premium if you wanted to try to generate income and you want to move kind of in and out of the positions quickly, or you can use it longer term. Use it on ETFs, for example. Use it on inverse ETFs. It's, it's dynamic. Well, my original setup was this. On 720, I bought 100 shares of EPB at 3102. Bought the March 35 put for 610. Uh, my total at risk is 5.7% or $2.12. And that's what we were looking at. Now, the catchy sayings Kurt uses that we talked about with the, uh, the problem with stop orders is we don't want to pick stocks. We want to pick stops. And we also don't want to time our trades. We want to trade time. The three principles of radioactive trading um, that we reviewed on Saturday and that are in the blueprint, of course, we talk about the uh, forcing an ideal size trade, but also we want to take advantage of the at the money bell curve. We want to sell premium when we're at the strike price. So I sold that SLW call when the stock was trading around 21, and I made the adjustments. Uh, the DIA adjustment was made with income method number four when the put option become at the money and that time value had swollen. So you don't time your trades, trade time. All right. What's different now? Well, we kind of want to look away from buying and hoping. We want to begin with a structure that can only use a tiny amount in case it goes against your expectations. We're going to use that married put setup as a unique structure to, uh, to launch other trades. The income methods, we reviewed income method number one and income method number four. Single digit losses, potential for double digit returns. Risking nickels to potentially make dimes. That's where we want to be. Now, what should you do next? Well. Let's review. We've talked about the problem is losses in the market, things we can't control. Why hasn't it been solved yet? Maybe we've been looking in the wrong places. What's possible now is limit our losses to single digits per trade, yet enhance the returns on the winners. What's different now? We've given away for free today three very important things. How to enter into a limited risk position with a long time horizon of insurance. How to make some adjustments on the position to generate income and pay for the initial at risk and to potentially make those trades bulletproof as well. Now, what do you want to do next? Think back to that question we asked in the poll. Once again, I want to apologize real quick for going way over time. I'm sorry, sometimes uh, I, I get more involved than I should. <laughs> but uh, what do we want to do next? Well, we want to get more knowledge. You want to take these next steps further. Think about this. Think about the poll we asked earlier. Were you happy with your trading results in the last 12 months? How do you want to answer that in the next 12 months? If I ask you this same question, on August 3rd, 2011, what do you want your answer to be? Do you want to be able to say, yes, you're happy with your trading results? Or do you still want to say, no, I'm not happy because I was trying to speculate and look for 10, 15% returns month by month and I got uh, blown out on a couple of positions? Or do you want to you know, just say mixed emotions? I had some good returns, I had some great profits, but I gave some of it back. Where do we want to be 12 months from now? Okay, The blueprint. This is the guidebook for limiting your risk using those 10 different income methods. It's over 240 pages dealing all 10 income methods, eight appendices. Uh, it says nine there, but there's 10 income methods. <clears throat> um, this is the blueprint. This is the guide for putting yourself into limited risk positions, having unlimited upside profit opportunity, and being able to adjust the positions with 10 different income methods as the stock moves. Fission, if you wanted to follow over Kurt's trades, you can read more about this at RadioactiveTrading.com. Look over his shoulder and he makes his trades. For anyone who buys the blueprint, you'll receive a discount coupon where you can subscribe to your first month of Fission for only $10, but the regular subscription is $69 a month. I have Kurt on the uh, Radioactive Trading site. Uh, again, I apologize for the formatting. It's uh, kind of had to put this together quickly and borrow some of Kurt's slides and it didn't copy over correctly. But we offer those online, uh, I'm sorry, the archive video CDs. We just did one on Saturday for Income Methods 1 and 2. There's a Fort CD, which discusses the foundations of radioactive trading. Profit with Puts, which discusses Income Methods 3 and 4. The Money Nets 5 and 6, and Combining Income Methods. Each one is $89. 
Uh, they're available. Just go to RadioactiveTrading.com if you wanted more information and look at the products page or give me a call. Okay. Now the free materials, go to RadioactiveTrading.com. You can access the Trade Simulator tool from the Resources tab. Hey, you can also get a free two-week trial to Power Options, the tools we use today to identify positions, track the positions in the portfolio, and look at the available opportunities. Um, we also can, if you go to RadioactiveTrading.com and get the sketch, there's also a free audio CD um, with some archived webinars focusing on why should I decide to limit my risk. Of course, give me a call anytime during market hours at 877-992-7971 or send us an email to support at RadioactiveTrading.com. Okay, I wanted to get through all of that. Um, I'm going to just briefly go through. I do have some questions that have come in. What I'm going to do is actually try to navigate to somewhere real quick. Hold on, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll get to all your questions. Barry, I know you got some questions. Michael, you have some questions. I'm going to stay on the line for another few minutes, try to access that. I wanted to go back to RadioactiveTrading.com. Remember the Resources tab. You can get that two-week free trial to Power Options and the Trade Simulator tool. Barry is looking for monthly income for retirement. What IMs fit that profile? Essentially, Barry, you would be looking at income method number one, number six, number five, eight's a possibility in a neutral market. Um, to me, income method number three is considered uh, income method as well. Ah, Mike wants to know, um, I'm a member of PowerUp.com. Mike, I'm sorry it took me too long to get to the questions. Is this webinar available to view later, or are there other similar webinars? Yes, I did record this presentation, and I'm going to archive it. Um, on Power Options, let me navigate back over to there very quickly. Hold on a second here. Where are we? I'll just go there. Okay, back to the old one strike tool. On Power Options, oh, sorry, I clicked the wrong button there. Hold on one second. There we go. All right, I, I swear I'll figure this out soon enough without problem. <laughs> when you're on your Power Options account, Michael, just click on Learning Center, and from the Learning Center, click on Webinars. You see the upcoming webinars, and over here are the previously recorded webinars. If you go into the radioactive trading presentation, I'm sorry, archives, there's a full presentation on just using the Power Options tools for radioactive trading from uh, June 10th. You can watch that flash or watch it on YouTube, but I will have this one archived, uh, available in that archive as well, probably first thing tomorrow morning, maybe even later on this afternoon. Okay? Woody. How can radioactive trading strategy be used if your general expectation on a stock is bearish? We get this question all the time, and some people think, well, or most investors start off with, can I just reverse it and do married calls? Yeah, but there's some problems with that. If I short a stock and do an in-the-money call that's far out in time, what's going to end up happening there is I'm going to have to pay a monthly fee or a margining fee to my broker, so I'm going to be increasing my risk month by month. Instead of doing that, what you might want to do is if you're looking at a married call position rather than shorting the stock, you might want to look to apply a long put position, an out-of-the-money long put, the parity trade to that married call. What I prefer to do, Woody, is as we talked about using the search tool, if I'm bearish on the market and I'm considering this protected method so I want to be protected and I would consider this protected method, I'm going to do a screen and power options for married puts on inverse ETFs, ETFs that go up in price as the stock falls, or as the market itself falls. So if I'm going... That's what I'm going to look for. If I'm bearish, that's what I'm going to do. Barry wants to know, uh, do you send out updates to the blueprint? Yes, if there's been a, most of the updates that are made, Barry, uh, a lot of times are just cosmetic. Um, they're just, you know, making a change or maybe updating to a recent RPM, for example. If there is a major adjustment on the blueprints, uh, we do at times make those available, but very rarely do we have a whole new income method to release or a whole new uh, adjustment principle to release. Oh, okay. Mike just says thank you. I knew they were available somewhere on the website. Mike, by the way, they're also the webinars um, are also available right here in Radioactive Trading. That's similar one. Um, if you go to Radioactive Trading and click on free webinars and podcasts, uh, in addition to having Kurt's radio show available, you have the different uh, presentations. Here's that Power Options for Radioactive Trading, a full hour on just the Power Options tools. The mathematical edge for radioactive trading. I highly recommend that those of you who are new to the system that are just playing around with the free materials. You want to take a look at this particular one, the mathematical edge of radioactive trading. That's where Kurt goes more in depth into some of the discussion about the Martingale and the trade simulator tool and how to set up the positions correctly. Hmm. 
Wow, you guys have been fantastic. You stayed with me. I went uh, 29 minutes over. It's kind of ironic. Uh, I usually chide Kurt at times when we're going more than 15 or 12 minutes over time, and here I am going 30 minutes over time. But you, most of you stayed with me for the entire presentation, and I am greatly appreciative of that. Again, um, this will be available later on this week in the archives on radioactive trading and on power options. I greatly appreciate you all joining me today, and thank you for the questions. I hope I was able to answer them uh, well, and I hope you all got a lot of great and tradable information from this presentation today. I look forward to seeing you at some of our new presentations or our weekly presentations going forward. Any questions, again, please feel free to send us an email to support at radioactivetrading.com or give me a call toll-free at 877-992-7971. Uh, that's if you live inside the continental U.S. If you live outside the continental U.S., just give us an, um, a call at 302-992-7971. Oh, Ken asked, do you have the blueprint? Where do I get the updates? They're not made available readily on the site, Ken, but why don't you go ahead and, uh, I'm sorry, send me an email to support at radioactivetrading.com. Let me know which version you have, and then I'll take a look through and see which updates would uh, make sense for you that may be worthwhile or may not be worthwhile. Um, you know, the cosmetic ones, you won't need those, for example. Okay, so just send me an email, Ken, to support at radioactivetrading.com. All right, everyone, I hope you have a great week going forward and that your trades work well for you. We look forward to seeing you again. Take care, everyone, and uh, good night. Happy trading.